Hey, what's going on, folks? Happy Friday, everybody. It's Larry of Packmaster's Dog Training. All right, so someone suggested that I should make a video talking about how to stop a dog from chasing um, cars. I don't know. I couldn't think of the word. Sorry. Chasing cars, bicycles, joggers, small animals, large animals. Basically, how do we stop a dog from chasing anything that moves? All right. It's actually a very, very easy thing, but we're going to get into a little more detail about it. So uh, I don't provide anyone with a false sense of hope or some false information or someone takes this and turns it into something I didn't say. OK, so really the best way to stop any dog from chasing cars, bikes, joggers, animals, anything that moves is with proper e-collar training. Right. Not a big surprise. But I said proper e-collar training. There's a big difference from everyday e-collar training that we see day in and day out and proper e-collar training. So what do I mean by that? Um, I've been very vocal and very outspoken um, against putting an e-collar on a dog and using it to punish or correct the behavior without teaching and training the dog first. Very outspoken. Uh, a lot of people hate me because of it. But as we know how I feel about that, really don't care too much about that. So where people fail is they'll take a dog that has an issue like chasing cars, let's say, and you know, I'll see someone make a statement or send an email. My dog has this behavior. I'm thinking about getting an e-collar to stop it. Oh man, that just, that makes my skin crawl because I know where that's going. They're going to fail. They're not going to be successful and chances are they're going to mess up their dog. All right. So what I mean by proper e-collar training, I constantly speak about how I don't teach anything with the e-collar, right? I teach everything with motivation, with food, with purely positive reinforcement type training. I'm real big into, you know, positive reinforcement. That's how I teach my dogs. That's how I teach clients dogs. But at the same time, every dog I train also gets e-collar trained. Where people fail, why so many trainers and everyday dog owners fail with the e-collar is they think it's a magic tool, they put the tool on the dog, and right away they wait for the dog to exhibit the unwanted behavior, and then they light the dog up. It's never gonna work, guys, and you can definitely create a lot of problems with that, all right? You, you, you just can. So when you take the anti-e-collar establishment, let's call it, that's out there, people that hate e-collars and say really bad things about e-collars, and they make all these claims about what an e-collar is gonna do to your dog, in a way, they're very right. They, they really are. There are a lot of bad things that can come with e-collar training if you're inexperienced and abusive, plain and simple. But what the anti-e-collar people fail to understand is they think of it being used in a way that it shouldn't be. And yes, unfortunately, there's still many so-called balanced trainers that use it improperly. I know because I get dog after dog after dog that has been messed up with the e-collar, okay? Point and simple, that's a fact. So yes, you can mess up a dog with an e-collar, but it's so simple not to, it's so simple to teach properly. I wrote a book about e-collar training that a 12 year old can read and understand. I really did, it's, it's that simple and I have received hundreds upon hundreds of emails from everyday dog owners that have completely changed their lives around just by reading that very basic, simple book and their dogs are completely off leash and never caused any harm, okay? Here's the thing, when you teach the e-collar correctly, chances are, there's a very good chance you'll never have to use it in a way that the anti-e-collar people see it, okay? Meaning, there's a very good chance you'll never have to use the e-collar as a punitive tool on high levels. Chances are you won't have to. If you do have to, that's okay. But when it's taught properly, there is no negative feedback, all right? Let's go, man, I'm trying so hard not to ramble on here. Let's look at, let's talk about underground fences, okay? Everybody knows what an underground fence is, right? They work. Most dogs respond to them very well. Most dogs will stay in your yard when they're trained with an underground fence and will not cross that boundary. Some do, actually many do, but most will respect that boundary line, okay? 
So the way that's taught is there's flags, there's markers set up all around the danger zone, right? The dog is basically led to it. There's a warning beep or a tone that goes off. And then the dog is led to the boundary where it experiences a very, very harsh, painful shock. Let's call it what it is. Yes, the dog is shocked when it hits that boundary and it is at a very high level, a very high level. It makes that dog very suspicious and cautious of that area where those markers are. That's why it works, all right? So what happens after that? That dog goes back in that yard every day and runs around, there's no fear, right? Even though something pretty traumatic happened for a split second, that dog runs around and there's no fear. It just stays away from those boundaries. But now, let's say if you put a leash on that dog and tried to walk it to that boundary line, holy crap, you're gonna see a whole different dog, right? You're gonna get a very bad reaction. That dog's going to put the brakes on. It's going to freak out. It's going to be scared. It's going to be nervous because it associates those markers with something that really bad happened last time. Okay? That's not what we want or how we train with the e-collar. So we don't want the e-collar to be an underground fence. We just don't want it. We don't want it to be an underground fence. Meaning we don't want your dog to stick by your side because if it moves out of a certain range, it experiences the underground fence situation. We don't want that, right? We want the e-collar to be like a cell phone that you can reach out and call your dog when it's off leash and you could tell them, hey, I need you to come back here. Hey, you need to leave it alone. But God forbid an emergency arises, you can scream at that dog. You can scream loudly and that dog will respond because he understands the language, okay? When you scream at someone in a language they don't understand, it causes confusion and chaos. It's that simple. It's that simple. So if you take just three weeks, let's say a month, much longer than, than we need, but let's say a month so you take your time, and you go step by step through the conditioning process where you're teaching and training the dog the meaning of the e-collar what that weird stimulation means on low levels over and over and over really teaching him pairing it with lots of positive reinforcement lots of food lots of praise you're making it a good thing where you know you're doing several sessions short sessions every day and the dog is learning what it means there is no confusion okay worst case scenario your dog is off leash and it decides to chase a car right there that's a deadly situation right or any situation that can cause great harm or death to your dog if you were to utilize that e-collar on the highest level possible you can stop that dog in its tracks save its life right save it from any harm that dog's going to come back to you and there is no negative side effects no negative blowback no underground fence scenario because the dog understands it completely. I promise you, I promise you, I've done it for years and I've showed people over and over. But the good thing is, guys, I'm always talking about how in today's world of dog training, there's way too much focus on corrections and punishment and not enough on teaching. I'll be the first one to say that. And so when I'm training a dog, I've used very, very few corrections. I, not because I'm anti-correction, because the better you get at training a dog, the less corrections you're using. And that's just a fact. That is just a fact, okay? So if I had to give my dog, if I had to send my dog to, I had two choices, a purely positive trainer that maybe doesn't get the best results, you know, and is a mediocre trainer, or a balanced trainer that uses e-collars that maybe doesn't get the best results, you know, kind of a mediocre trainer, but uses e-collars and uses them the way many people do, I'm not going to think twice. My dog's going to the purely positive trainer because that dog might not get the best results if they're just a mediocre trainer, but they're not going to hurt my dog or mess it up. As to where you give my dog to a balanced trainer that uses e-collars improperly, you're gonna mess my dog up. And then you're going to experience a pretty severe ass whooping. It's that simple. So seriously, all kidding aside, 
the anti-e-collar establishment pushes every single day all over the world to get this tool banned because of the people that are in the spotlight that in my opinion misuse the tool and give people plenty of ammunition all right so i can go down to my local humane society here take any dog out of there any dog i don't care which dog it is any dog that has no training and is a mess and if you let it off leash it's going to run away if it sees a rabbit it's going to run away and within three weeks of taking my time and building a very strong bond with that dog i could have that dog off leash calling it away from any distraction probably without ever correcting that dog with the e-collar and that's just the fact that i'm not the only one there's many great e-collar dog trainers out there Okay, there's many great dog trainers that use e-collars properly. So please don't think I'm saying, hey, I'm the only one. You know, that's, that's not the case. But unfortunately, there is a lot more that use it improperly. Some of them don't give a damn. Some of them, it's out of lack of knowledge and arrogance. And some of them, you know, they try. Their heart's in the right place, but they just don't get it. And I talk to at least one trainer every single day from all over the world. Literally, every single day. Believe me, my wife and kids will tell you because they're sick of it that are struggling and they're doing almost everything right but there's just little things with the e-collar that they don't understand and usually what it comes down to is they're trying to get the dog to do what they want with use of the e-collar long before they actually teach it so even though they have my book in front of them they're going through the instructions or a video that i've put out or someone else that trains similarly puts out they're still not doing it they're not paying attention to the fine details and the fine details are very, very important. Okay. Very important. And it's important as dog trainers that use e-collars or any tool for, for that matter, you have to put it out there in its best light and show the anti-establishment that the things that they think goes on doesn't happen. And that's why you usually see my dogs with no e-collars on. You know, if you notice, the only time they have e-collars on is when I'm doing some kind of e-collar video or demonstration because I don't need them. And if you teach it properly, chances are you won't need it either. But when a dog is off leash, it provides great freedom for the dog and it provides you that sense of security. You have to prepare for what if, all right? You, you, just, you just have to. But if you're gonna use the tool, then you gotta take time to teach it. So again, it's very simple and I'm sure everyone's like, hey, well, that's no surprise. You can't train a dog not to chase cars and rabbits and joggers and bikers with purely positive methods. You can't do it. Let me take that back. It may be possible, but it's gonna take a very long time. Not every trainer can do it and not every dog is capable, okay? Because the act of chasing is self-rewarding and it's a much bigger reward than any food, treat, praise or toy that you can provide for a dog and that's just a fact that is a straight up fact guys so the only tool on the planet as far as as far as i know if i'm mistaken please let me know where you can have that communication and that ability to reach out and let your dog know what you want while it's off leash is the e-collar and it's really important that we utilize that tool not only to the best of its ability but properly and the, in the most you the most humane fashion sorry i'm having trouble talking it's freaking freezing out here really important guys so again all of you people I think most trainers will agree. I see more dogs for reactivity than any other behavior, most likely the leash reactivity. A lot of people call it aggression, but it's usually not. So most trainers will probably agree that most of the dogs we see are, have issues being reactive towards people or dogs, okay? Next in line behind that is dogs that will run away and chase things that they shouldn't be chasing. Can you imagine how many dogs we can keep out of shelters if everyone learned how to utilize the e-collar properly teach the dog the language take one month one month is a long time i could do this in three or four days i promise you because i've done it for a long time but even i've slowed down and learned to take my time and give the dog a lot of time and enjoy the process take one month go through the steps take your time and teach 
the dog the meaning of the e-collar and what you will find is you will be able to use it in all aspects all aspects of your life okay you will be able to give your dog that off-leash freedom that it needs and deserves all dogs should be able to run free and on top of that you will be able to make all known obedience better faster and sharper and What's most important for most people, it is by far the easiest, quickest, most humane, most effective way to stop unwanted behaviors. That's just a fact, folks. All right? So give it a shot. Keep an open mind. We've got to police our own. Stop supporting the bad e-collar trainers and the bad e-collar. You have to. As long as these folks have support out there, we're going to keep worrying about losing your tools. That's all, that's all there is to it, guys. You got to show the good and police the bad. All right, folks. Happy Friday. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Peace.